is trying to get us used, prepare us for the future redemption of the Jewish people. Future redemption of the Jewish people. This is going to be a, a global change, drastic for the good, for the best. <clears throat> and everyone will see, feel, be aware of the Creator, that the Creator is creating them. And everyone will see and feel and be aware of their own uniqueness and how much God loves everybody and everybody will reveal their potential. Everybody has a potential in every, even the smallest movement, even the thought to improve the world in some way. That's what everyone's concern is going to be. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's what everyone's concern is going to be. Revealing God. So that's the idea of Hasidut. The whole idea of Hasidut is to get us used, get us accustomed to thinking about, talking about, acting according to what God wants. What God wants, the revelation of Hashem in this physical world. And to think about ourselves only in so far as what is our obligation to Hashem and how will this help to fix up the world? To improve the whole universe, all mankind. Incredible. That's called the revelation of God. Nowadays, Hashem, God, is so far away from us that to talk about God, it's like a religious subject and who needs it. And it's really to- totally impractical and, and meaningless, etc., etc. So that's what Hasidic is trying to do, to bring it, <clears throat> more into reality so that we'll see that, that in fact is what reality is oh excuse me that is what reality really is okay so what does the Rebbe say in order one, one of the main features of this revelation of Hashem is going to be Mashiach Mashiach he's going to really be a human being that he is going to implement all of this world health we're talking about. But it's quite interesting. I mean, I just thought of this now. There is this uh, thing now, there's this fellow Bill Gates, and he has like hundreds of billions of dollars, tremendously rich, and he's going to save the world. He wants world health. Everyone in the world will be healthy, right? Okay, he, he wants it, in my, I mean, my estimation is totally wrong and also <clears throat> totally destructive, but nevertheless, this idea is being put into consciousness, world health, where there's even a world health organization and world is gonna be a vaccine and this vaccine is gonna make everybody healthy. You're gonna take this vaccine, no one is ever gonna get sick for anything afterwards Never, no more diseases, no more of this. <clears throat> okay, it's ridiculous what he's saying, but nevertheless, the idea itself is, is a true idea. And the vaccine is <clears throat> being aware of the creator. Being aware of creator. Here, what he's saying is, <clears throat> what a thing, I mean, I just, I'm going off on this thing, but I just want to say, I just thought of this. What is this? There's this invisible force permeating the world, which is called viruses. An evil force permeating the world that no one can see. And it's everywhere. And it's everywhere. And if we don't do something that's going to come out, it's going to kill everybody. So therefore, you have to take a virus. And the virus is going to, well, Judaism says exactly the opposite. There's an invisible force permeating the whole world. And it's good. And it's called life. And it's called health. And it's called awareness. This is permeating the world. <clears throat> this is the force that's permeating the world. And we just have to bring it out. That's all. And once we bring it out, that'll destroy all the bad and etc. You don't have to make extra uh, injections and everything to protect yourself from this. The, the, is permeating in the world a force of good? But we just have to reveal it. That's the problem. 
That's the problem. Not it's not the problem. In a way, that's that's the 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 the, the reason that we're here. If it wasn't for this problem, we wouldn't even be existing. Okay, so the idea, though, is not to keep the problem wrong. The idea is to solve it. How do we solve this problem? By revealing the truth, by revealing that God really is creating us and what Hashem is. Says the Rebbe, that's the whole idea of the Mashiach. And Mashiach is going to be just, if you want to call it, the, the first step. Step number two is the Holy Temple. Building the Holy Temple. And building the Holy Temple, that's only another step. The next step is going to be gathering all the Jews together from all the world. That's the third step. And we're going to see, and the fourth step is going to be that all of the non-Jews will also be aware of this. And finally, the fifth step, let's see if this is how, this, how the Rebbe explains this is that the whole world, the physical world, will be yelling out the message that God is creating it. Like now, scientists can look at the stars and the sky and see and see amazing things, and philosophers or whatever, the, 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 the thinkers can learn messages from the sunset and inspiring messages. And well, everything is going to be inspiring to everyone. Everyone will feel the godly message in every detail of the world. It'll be, the whole world is just this amazing miracle. People will just be so grateful that they're alive and so grateful that they can serve the Creator. And then the final step is going to be the raising of the dead. That's the final step. Okay, so the point of this, of this mimer is that building the holy temple is the step to the goal <laughs> to bring godliness into this physical world. So let's see. We did this, we did this. Okay, here we're up to here. Up to here. Let's see if I can get this here. Okay. <clears throat> so, in order to, to to explain how this can be that God is really everywhere, and we totally don't see Him because the world hides over and contradicts God. <clears throat> and that the goal is going to be to reveal God in all these concealments. Not to remove the concealments. Not to remove the world like these Eastern religions say. But rather that God should be revealed in every detail of this confusing and concealing world. And the Rebbe explains it in a little bit sort of sort of Kabbalistic terms that this revelation is the name of God, which is called Yudke Vovke. Right? Yudhe Vovke. And the concealing force of God is the name Elohim, which we're going to say Elohim. So Elohim conceals God. How does it conceal God? By making all these details. God is totally one. And the details seem to contradict the fact that God is one. If God is one, then why are there so many blades of grass and so many amoebas and so <clears throat> So the Rebbe says like this, God, true, conceals, so to speak, over himself with his name Elohim, and the world hides over God. But it's not a true hiding. It's something like a teacher and a pupil. If a teacher, let's say, is a big genius, and he has to teach these pupils, right? Albert Einstein is given the job of teaching third grade class. That's where he was assigned. And he can't get out of it. So how is he going to teach this third grade class? He has to teach them. 
So it means that he has to totally withdraw all of his attention from all of his knowledge. Can't tell these children anything about nuclear physics or regular physics or higher mathematics <clears throat> or geometry or anything. Simple, simply has to explain to them. It's going to take him several days to explain what does it mean that two and two is four. <clears throat> so it's a tremendous contraction. And these children think, wow, this teacher, we've got this Mr. Einstein, he's so smart. He even knows not only how much two and two is, he knows how much two and four is. This is just incredible. Right? To them, it's just the most amazing thing in the world. Right? Just the most amazing thing. And he even said, tomorrow we're going to learn what we call multiplication. Oh, what is that? By him, it's absolutely nothing. But by them, it's the biggest. The same thing is with us. Hashem conceals himself. Or, and it's like a teacher teaching the pupil. By the, by the teacher, nothing is hidden. By the pupil, it is. Same thing. God, by God, nothing is hidden. By us, it is. Okay. So, Lahosiv, let's add on. Shiba Mashal, there's this example we just gave about a teacher and a pupil. Zesh Lagabia Rav, that which from the viewpoint of the rabbi, of the, of the rav, it was and the teacher. Few, but the teacher, from the viewpoint of the teacher, in atzimtzum master. And this concealment that he makes for the sake of the pupils, it doesn't really conceal anything by him. What does it mean? Who is shala'ach atzimtzum? That after he contracts his teaching, mayor Eitzel, so there shines by him, his deep ideas, gam also externally, but gam and also in the garments. Okay, what are we saying? Let's take our example, Einstein. Good, we'll continue with this. Now, Einstein is teaching these three grade, third grade children, and he comes into the class and he sees who these children are, and he starts to teach them, and all the kids are crying. They're not going to sleep. What's going on? They don't understand one word. So he starts to ask them questions, and he realizes they just don't understand anything about mathematics. They don't even understand what the word means, mathematics. <clears throat> so what is he going to do? How, what's he going to do? So he, he has to withdraw all of his ideas, take his mind totally off of any sort of physics or complicated ideas, totally has to remove his mind. And then he makes like a, a teaching plan how he's going to do it, and how he's going to teach these children. And little by little, he gets it figured out that he has to take them in. If he wants to teach them, let's say, mathematics, so he has to bring in, like, you know, apples and, and uh, baseballs and uh, hats, because he says, okay, here I have two apples. Now, here are two more apples. How many apples are there together? The kids say, one second, four. He says, okay, let's take the apples away and just say two, the number two, and the number two. How much is there? The kids say, I want to go home. I don't understand this. It's too hard for me. So he says, okay, let's go back again. So then he, he gets them to understand. And they say, well, teacher, I want to ask a question. Will the same thing work with, let's say, uh, things other than apples? So he says, that's why I brought the baseballs. You have two baseballs and two baseballs until the children start to understand. How do you say they, they remove their mind from the physical and they start getting a little bit, right? What's it called? Extrapolate. There's such a thing as the number two. And this number two applies to apples and to baseballs and everything. Okay. Now, meanwhile, by the ramp, by the teacher, this is not, he's not concealing anything to himself. He knows everything. He knows all but the problem is, is it's, it's the same thing by God, but it's not exactly the same thing because what, when Einstein is working at trying to figure out how to teach these children, so in that time, he is really removing his mind, he's not thinking about the you know, nuclear physics, not thinking about it. But afterwards, he does the whole thing, then 
he knows what he knows, and there's the the ideas also. Right? He knows he's got his mind. But while he's making this plan for the children, he is actually removing his attention from his tremendous knowledge of physics. So it's not exactly the same thing by Hashem. Let's see, which is not the case by Hashem. That what it says that God contracts his light in order to make the world. This does not to be taken literally. God did not contract anything. He did not remove himself. Everything stayed exactly the same way as it is. This idea of God hiding over himself it does not conceal godliness. It's not like Einstein trying to teach these children that temporarily he has to remove his mind from his deep physical physics ideas. And then afterwards, he can, when he made the plan, he can go back to it. By God, it's not that way. God does not remove anything. <clears throat> So there's two topics in this. That after God contracts himself, there shines godliness, revelation, in this empty place, just like before the contraction. In other words, after God makes this process by which he's going to create the world, and God hides over his infinite reality in order to make this created reality. That hiding over is called the tzimtzum, the contraction, Kabbalistic idea. But it's a Kabbalistic idea to explain a very simple fact, that the world is being created by God all the time, and we don't feel it at all. How can it be that we don't feel it? Not at all. You can take all the telescopes and all the microscopes and all the scientists and in the world, and then the philosophers, and they can come to the conclusion there's no such thing as a creator. The world is just here. Why? Because God made this thing called the tzimtzum. The tzimtzum is the God contracted himself. Says the Rebbe, God forbid, God did not contract himself. And you know what? He didn't even contract his light. It's not like the 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 this this the uh, psychi- the, the I'm sorry the, the physicist that when he's making this plan to teach the children so he removes his mind from his big ideas right it's, God did not remove his mind or anything from his reality the yeshnam v'shegam ba'et even at the time when God is making this so to speak contraction and hiding himself and a tzimtzum master lagabe. It doesn't hide over him at all. Kamavur, like it's explained at long length in the Drushim. But this apparently simple idea is very, very deep because, <clears throat> first of all, seemingly it goes against the simple narrative of the Bible. The simple narrative of the Bible is that God is one of the characters, true, the main character of the Bible, and that God creates other characters. He created Adam. And then from Adam came Cain and Abel, and eventually came along Noah, and eventually came along Abraham. And these people sort of got the idea. They got the idea properly. And then, and then afterwards, there was more generations with more sins and more adventures. And more interesting things happened. And God is one of the characters of the Bible. And if you look in books of Kabbalah, it explains what is this character how amazing he is with the spherot and everything like that. I mean, but it's not that different from how amazing a human being is. Right? A human being, the, the respiratory system and the, 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 the nervous system, it's really pretty amazing. So God, being one of the characters of the Bible, also has his systems. But his systems are spiritual. So that's the spherot. And the, that is definitely a way of looking at, the, that's the simple biblical narrative. And, and Kabbalah deals with, you know, this spiritual worlds, realms of godliness. That's a way of looking at it. In fact, that's the basically the way that the Gona Vilna and all of the, how do you say, the Litvisha, the, that's their, their world view. But Kabbalah of the, Has, of the Hasidim was different. Of the Baal Shem Tov, the, the, the Ramban, it was different. And <clears throat> 
So in, in simple language, it's what's called simsum kapshuto or not kapshuto. Did God really remove himself from the world? God removed himself from the world. God sees everything. God, like today, we have the, what is it, the, the video cameras. God sees everything, and God can come in and do anything he wants. But God is one thing, and the world is another thing. So Hasidut says, that is close to idolatry. It's not an idolatry, but it's pretty close. Because it's saying there's two existences. And even if you want to say that temporarily, God separated himself from the world. That's called the tzimtzum. Temporarily, he tzim, just like the, the Einstein in our example, he temporarily removes his mind from these ideas of mathematics and physics temporarily in order to teach the children. Temporarily. So maybe God temporarily, no. God never removed his mind. He never removed his presence. God never changed himself. What did he do then? He somehow or other made this light, the ability of God to make a world, right? He articulated this. He sort of hid over the light, like a person putting on a disguise. The person is still there. You just can't see him, can't recognize him. That's what the tzimtzum really is, that God never changed anything. He didn't change himself. He didn't change his light. What did happen? Some or other, God made these changes in his light to create a world, which means me and you. And he's doing it every moment. If so, it means that by Hashem, it's never, nothing ever changed. Nothing ever changes. And because there's nothing except for Hashem, is that's the, world, the world is the same thing. The world did not change Hashem. But the, the whole, if so, why did God even make the world? He made it because he wants to be revealed, this fact to be revealed here in the world. And just like Hasidut, these ideas of Hasidut are different from any other books you're going to read. The same thing with the Holy Temple is different from any other building in the world. It's a building that reveals this fact that Hashem never changes in the world. I hope he's, uh, according to this, move and we can understand even more. That this fact that God created the world, this existence that God made from the name Elohim, that it can shine the revelation of the name Yudke Vavke. I, if God makes this name Elohim to hide over himself, then that's it. It hides over. God made it that way. How can you shine revelation in concealment? It's like a blind man that can see, a deaf man that can hear, right? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. How can it be? How can a person be deaf and at the same time he can hear? If he can hear, he's not deaf. A person can be blind, but he can see perfectly. If he can see perfectly, he's not blind. How can it possibly be? It's the same thing. Elohim is, makes us blind and deaf to Hashem. How can there be that we can see godliness in this name Elohim? How can it be? How? Keep because um, the the example we had of the rabbi and the pu a pupil, the teacher and the pupil, Hatsimtsum Atsmo, this contraction that the teacher makes, at least temporarily, to teach the children, who Helim Gamitzalarav, that the teacher has to temporarily at least hide all of his knowledge from himself. Shahari Be'it Hatsimtsum at the time when the rab when the teacher is contracting his mind, or let's say the time when, the, when Einstein is teaching the children, he has to conceal himself from all of his ideas as well. When he's teaching the children, if there's floating around in his mind, all sorts of, you know, the, 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 the calculus and trigonometry and whatever is floating around in his mind, then he can't teach the children, right? He said, do you understand? He said, like, like the, you know, the, the absent-minded professor, you know, he's thinking about something else. He's rambling out in the class. Nobody understands anything. No. When he's teaching, he has to really hide his knowledge from himself. Lochian, therefore, Gamachret Simpson, therefore, even after God contracts himself, well, after the rabbi, the teacher, contracts his knowledge when the rabbi sees, at Etzim Sechli goes back, to his original understanding, Gambal Vushim Mashalim, and he puts it also into all these examples about the the, the, the bananas and the apples. 
is ein ze shayach lelevushim atzmam. It's not really relevant to the to the to the garments themselves, to the examples themselves. Let's again, the rab, the teacher, and the pupil. The teacher wants to teach the pupil what is two and three, two plus three. So he has to take two apples and two the two apples over here, and then he takes two more apples, three other apples. Or let's say he wants to really get the children, so he takes two apples. And then he takes three baseballs and he says, how many things do we have here, children? Right? And they say, we have things. I guess we have five. Oh, now they're starting to understand. At the time when the teacher is teaching these ideas, he has to completely not be thinking about physics or nuclear, nothing whatsoever. He's got to be gone. If so, how, and he has no intention of putting the ideas of nuclear physics into this baseball, into these, he's not thinking about that at all. He's teaching them necessary steps to get up to this. But he can't reveal his total knowledge in these baseballs and the, and the, and the bananas. That's, that's, if so, that's where our analogy breaks down. Because by God, it's not that way. Which is not the case by God. Even this that God conceals himself in order to create the world, and he's creating it constantly. It does not cover over the essence of God. When God is creating the world, he does not stop being infinite. Therefore, there can shine the revelation of the name Yud Vavke also into the physical world. In other words, God creating this physical world in no way hides or contradicts or changes, even for an instant, God's oneness and God's infinite oneness. <clears throat> if so, it comes out that when God is creating the world, which is every instant, that he's creating it from his essence, even though this, through this name of Yudke Vavke, and through the name, I'm sorry, of, of, of Elokus, we'll see also Yudke Vavke, we'll see. From the name of Elokim. But nevertheless, it is possible and it is factual that all of it, even the biggest revelations, can be revealed here in one instant. Not like Einstein with the three year old children, the th third grade children. There he can't reveal all of his knowledge at once. In fact, he has to conceal his knowledge even from himself in order to teach these children. It's not the case about Hashem. If so, where is this going to be revealed? Where is this going to be revealed? That the, that the world, the physical world, is no contradiction to the total oneness of God. And it'll be revealed here. Al Pizen, now we can understand the Beit HaMikdash. When Yaakov, he saw the ladder. Right? Yaakov's ladder. Look over there, Parshas Vayetze. It says that Yaakov came to this place and he said, this is the house of God. There was a ladder that was standing there. And, and Rashi says that the, the Holy Temple moved and came to where he was. Har Maria. It came, to, moved to where he was. And there was the, that place, he said, Yaakov said, in Beit Elohim. This is the house of God. And Onkelos translates in Aramaic, Leis din makom hediot. This is not a normal place. Lays din atar. I'm sorry, atar hedyo. This is not a normal place. What does it mean? Shemakom amigdash. Not only the holy temple, but the place where the holy temple is. Hari Yaakov, he called the place holy before there was only a holy temple there. The holy temple was only going to be built like 800 years after Yaakov laid down in this place. The place itself was holy. Hamakom says to Hamakom Amigdash, the place of the holy temple, Ainer Atir Hedyot, it is not a normal place. It's not really part of the physical, normal world. It's part of the holy, infinite, real world, which is what is that world? This world, same world, no difference. Alder says similarly, Allah and Makom Aron, it says the place of the ark can't be measured. So Makom Enomida. Not that the ark can't be measured, that's also true. But it says even the place of the ark 
because the revelation of this essence of God is not just in the holy temple. The whole goal is that we'll be in the physical world. The sand will be holy, the ants walking on the ground, everything will be holy. Right? The, the place itself will be holy. This is the goal of the Jewish people, and this will be begun with the Holy Temple. Ubirinian, let's explain this. The late Dian Atar Hedyot, what Yaakov said, that this is not a normal place. Right? Again, this is where Yaakov had his dream, and he saw the ladder, and it was standing, and this is the foot of the ladder was in Beersheba, and the top of it was this, and the middle of it was the Holy Temple. And Rashi says that it means the Holy Temple came and moved to him where he was, because he said that's the house of God. He said, it's not a normal place. It didn't really, it was a place, but it wasn't a place. I mean, he laid down in a place, but it sort of wasn't a place. It was God place. Not late, this is, din, this is not, utter a place, hedyot, which is normal. Okay, let's understand this idea, because this is the whole goal of the Jewish people, of the Mashiach, of the Holy Temple, namely that the world, physical world itself should be holy. Let's understand this Ba'omik Yota a little bit deeper. Let's understand this idea, Be'hektem Inyan, Yichud Havaya Velokin, the unity of Yudke Vavke and Elokin. Havaya Velokin Kolochad, that they'll be totally one. There's two ways of explaining this. This is the goal of the Jewish people. It says, Remember, we learned another mimer. It says, Two yudkes, the lower, the world and godliness will be totally one. To reveal Hashem in this physical world. How can we unify these two totally opposite ideas? Hashem is revelation, that's God. The name Elohim, that's concealment of God. And so to speak, there's something separate from that. How can you unify these two? There's two explanations in general how we can accomplish this goal of the Jewish people to reveal the Creator in the creation itself. Shagam, Shem, Elohim, that also the name Elohim, this Tzimtzum, this contraction, how can it reveal God? Because that's this whole thing. Why did God make this name Elohim? It is Legalot to reveal. Something like sunglasses. What are sunglasses? It conceals the light, right? It says no. The idea of sunglasses is to reveal the light. The same thing with the name Elohim. Elohim is like the name Elohim is sunglasses over the true revelation of Hashem. Why is it concealing Hashem? In order that it should be revealed. That in order that the name of Yud Kevav Ke could be drawn down below in this world. The only way there could be a world, and that's what God wants, a world where it's possible to steal and lie and do all the th Ten Commandments uh, that, that you're not supposed to do. You can transgress prohibitions. People want to transgress prohibitions in this world. In order that there should be a world that it's possible <clears throat> to transgress prohibitions, where we have to fight in order to serve God, this is by means of a tzimtzum contraction and a concealment of the name of God. But what's the purpose of this concealment in order that God can reveal himself here? He can create a world, that there should be a world where we can serve him. But Od beer, so, so the name Elohim is just really sort of a tool to reveal godliness. Its purpose is to reveal godliness. So it's no contradiction that Yud Kei Vav Kei can be revealed in Elohim because that's a whole purpose. Oh, dear, another explanation. The Shnei Hashem was that these two names of Havaya and Elkim, these are just names. The name Yudke Vavke and the name Elohim, these are just names of God. This is not God himself. These are just names. <clears throat> and Hashem himself, Shalomayla Mishneim, God is above both of them. <clears throat> Ella, Shekachol, Abaratzono, but it just rose up in God's mind that the only way he could be revealed in this world, yeah, will be, Bishtei Kavim. There has to be these two opposites of infinite and finite. Bli Gavul, infinite and finite, Gilui and Simsum. But the essence of God is above 
revelation, and it's above contraction. So the essence of God is pure godliness. It's not revelation, and it's not concealment. Does that make any sense? Does that make, I mean, if, if God reveals himself, so he's revealed. He says, no, God is higher than being revealed. Oh, if so, then he's not revealed. No, what are you talking about? God is revealed. That's the whole goal, to reveal God. So I don't understand. God is concealed or he's revealed? What is he? Yes. He's concealed and he's revealed. He's revealed in the concealment. It's like I said before, it's like a deaf person that can hear, a blind person that can see. How can it possibly be a thing like that? So that's because Hashem is above both of them. I hope he's there, according to this. Yeshlo, see if we can add on. Beer was an extra explanation. Shalomayla gam atzimtsum atzmo. That above this contraction itself. Ain't no malim legabi or in sof. Excuse me. That's what we said before. That 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 God made this contraction. This tzimtsum. In the Torah it's talking about God spoke. And that's like another way of saying that God contracted himself, spoke. When a person speaks, he has to control himself. He has to bring his mind into ideas and to articulate. He has to know the language. So that's the idea of the tzimtzum, so to speak, is God speaking. How can it be? <clears throat> now we can understand how it is that this contraction that God made does not conceal on himself, right? Like we said before. It's not like the Einstein and the three third grade children where he has to actually conceal something. By God, it doesn't conceal. Why? Because God is above concealing and revealing. So to speak, this idea of God revealing himself and concealing himself, these are just creations of God. This is not the essence of God himself. The cave and since Sagam had seemed we can't understand this. Since this contraction of the name God in the name, the, the name Elohim, because this ability of God to you conceal himself, this is totally one with God himself. As Ein Shaykh, it's not possible that anything can be concealed by God. And because not, there's nothing except for God, okay, what's the Rebbe trying to do? What is this? This is not semantics. He's not trying to, to confuse us. Exactly the opposite. The Rebbe is trying to t tell us two amazing things. Number one, Hashem is infinitely, infinitely, infinitely far away from us. Infinitely. We cannot possibly conceive how distant we are from Hashem. No way. God creates the spiritual. We don't even know what the spiritual worlds are. And God creates them. Infinitely higher than... And at the same time, God is infinitely, infinitely close to us. <clears throat> so on one hand, God is infinitely close to us. That the Rebbe, This is the two paragraphs that I skipped because it's a little bit difficult. God is infinitely close to us. That's the name Yudke Vavke. On the other hand, God is infinitely far away from us. That's the name Elohim. He conceals over himself, makes himself far away. But all this business of being close to us and far away from us that is, that's us, that's our job. So God is, there's nothing more intimate and more real and more valuable than this fact of how close Hashem is to us. And the Rebbe just wants to get us acquainted in thinking of these terms because like the Rambam says, the whole point of creation is that the world will be filled with the knowledge of God. We say it three times a day in Aleinu. Yakiru v'yedu ko'ish If so, it is impossible because this name, the name Yudke Vavke, and the name, which is revealing God, and the name Elohim, which is concealing God, are really totally one, just part of God. So it's not possible that there can be any concealment by Hashem. Ahopizeh, according to this, and because there's nothing except for Hashem, so therefore it's not incomprehensible that Hashem should be revealed in this physical world. Alpiza, according to this, Yeshlober, we can explain even deeper the language what Yaakov said, that the the Aram, Aramaic translation of what Yaakov said, late din utter hedyot. This this is not din. This is not 
a place that is normal. <clears throat> normal means the regular world. Suddenly he said this place of the Holy Temple, Shamakom Amigdash, the place where this temple was going to be built, Einar Atar Hedyot, it is not a normal place. We're not talking about the Holy Temple that's going to be built. We're talking about the place itself. al says similarly, like it says, the place of the Ark can't be measured. Shagilui, that this revelation of God, which is above place, and time should shine in place, specifically in a physical world. Where did this amazing thing happen? Because of the place itself. And it is this place itself caused Hashem to be revealed in the world. The place itself. So what are we saying? The, in simple language, the purpose of the world is to reveal godliness in the world. That's the purpose. So it shouldn't be anything so amazing and so impossible to imagine that it'll happen. That's the goal. That's the goal. The goal of the physical, concealing, false world, the purpose of the world itself is to reveal God inside of it. That's its purpose. Tet. Well, I think we'll have to stop here. Let's just do one more line. We can see that this revelation of the physical world will become a revelation of the essence of a God this will only be in the third temple. Why? Let's just do this in, in quickly and we'll go back to it tomorrow. Okay, now we're getting back to the, 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 the subject that we began in this mimer. Why do we have to have a third temple? According to what we said, the first temple, even if the Jews would not have sinned, God would have destroyed it. It said there came the, the lion in the month of the lion and he destroyed the lion. In order that there would come the lion, which is God, and in the month of the lion, uh, and he would re create the lion, which is the holy temple. And it was the only reason that Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the first temple was in order that God would come and build the second temple, or it ended up being the third temple. It depends how you, you understand the word last temple. That's how the mimer started off, right? The last house will be greater than the first one. Last. So the Rebbe says there had to be a last house. It wasn't. It couldn't have been a first one alone. Why? Say because all God, this revelation, this unification of the Creator Himself in the physical dirt of this place, this could only be accomplished in the third temple. The reason is by Adrishon Mashani, the first and the second temples. They came from the the four letters of God's name. The shame of Vaya, the four letters of God's name, which hint at the ten spherot. The first holy temple was the first hey of God's name. What's, what's God's name? Yud. Then there's a hey. Then, the, uh, then there's a vav. And then there's another hey. So the first temple, that's the first hey of God's name. It's Bina. Understanding. And by means of this is the revelation of the Yud. That's the first temple. The first temple was the Yud Hay of God's name. By a Cheney in the second temple, this was the lower Hay of God's name, Malchut. And by means of this, you could reveal Vav, God's emotions. So the first and the second temple, that corresponds to the first two and the last two letters of God's four letter name, Yud Hay Vav Hay. But by Shlishi, but the third temple, this is not hinted at in God's name. This is the level of Keter. This is the crown, like we said before. And the Yavo Arye that we said that the lion that's going to come to rebuild the temple, this we said is a revelation of Keter, which is above the crown, which is above the whole order of Ishtal Shlut. So the first temple corresponds to yud -Hey. The second temple corresponds to vav -Hey. But the third temple is a third level that corresponds to the crown, which is not one of the four letters of God's name. It's above God's name. That's why you had to have a third temple, as we are going to explain. God willing, tomorrow can finish it. God willing, finish it. So come be with us tomorrow, and now we're going to learn a sicha of the Rebbe.